What's up, Internet? Welcome back to Octopath Traveler, and today we're going to be looking at Ulbrich the Apothecary. This is going to be a very interesting combination, because while this doesn't use any of the secret jobs, this certainly does bring out the best potential of every single party member on your team, and that's part of what makes the Apothecary so good. Not to mention that the Apothecary skill does have some nice boosts for your max HP, and Ulbrich has the highest max HP stats in the entire team that you have, so naturally they are a perfect fit for each other. So the thing about the Apothecary is that when you fight against enemies, particularly the bosses that have the status ailments, this is the perfect counter to that because if you let a status ailment hang on for too long or you don't deal with it immediately, then you're going to be having a rough time of it. So this is exactly the perfect counter to that. Not to mention that the Apothecary does come with the ability to wield axes. So as you can see over here on the weapons that Ulbrich has access to, he has access to the sword, the spear, and the axe. That's right, he does have the fire emblem weapon triangle and he might not necessarily make use of it due to the fact that the utility is more than enough for him to carry his weight. Also, the divine skill of the Apothecary, Dodor's Charity, is without question one of the most useful abilities that I've ever seen, not just an Octopath Traveler, but any RPG that I can care to remember. These are an extremely good skills to have, mainly because you're able to use any item, the, um, whoever you cast this spell on, the item that that character uses will be applied to the entire party. This can really come in handy, and if you're fighting against the hardest challenges in the game, you guarantee this safety of your entire team just by virtue of hitting everyone on a single go. It's very, very good. So what we're going to do is look over at the support skill builds that we're using. And this is pretty typical stuff. We're using Saving Grace. This is one of the best skills in the entire game. Ulbrich already has a really high HP. Feel free to sub this out for anything else because he doesn't really want much for tankiness. But anything more that he can do will just be very, very useful. This is especially true for the secret boss of the game. But even so, if you're just starting out and you don't necessarily have 5,000 HP to spare, this will definitely be something to make the fight a little bit more manageable. Next up is going to be Boost Start. The more BP that we have at the beginning, the better because the more we have, the sooner we can cast Dodor's Charity on the next party member, and then it's, we're just off to the races at that point. Elemental Edge, this is a very interesting choice. I'm giving him this not because of the elemental attack bonus, but because of the elemental defense. When I was talking about the base stats of these characters, Ulbrich not only has the highest HP stat, and not only is he tied with Hanitz for having the highest physical attack stat, he also has the highest physical defense stats out of all of them. It's a very, very good thing to have, but he does want a little bit for elemental defense so that's exactly what this is for it gives you the cast and if there were any times where an enemy were to cast a lower defense on you or a lowered elemental defense then this just completely cancels it out so it's really really good and one other thing that you may want to consider instead of Elemental Edge, assuming you can't afford it just yet, or the same thing goes for Boost Start, you might want to just go around looking for things like Patience, or uh, like Hang Tough, Grows on Trees, like any of the Merchant skills can be pretty good too. I would personally recommend SP Saver the most in, if you don't have these abilities just yet, and Hail and Hardy since that increases your HP. So if you don't have those yet, um, if you don't have these two skills yet, I would recommend subbing those out. But for the most part though, these are the ones that I would run with. And then finally, the Thief skill, Fleet foot this is mainly just for the additional speed it's nice if Ulbrich can go on as early as he can per turn and that's exactly what I want to do like again he's all about the utility but he can't do that if he's going last not to mention that by virtue of being a warrior I would like very much for him to cast an insight before things begin so that he would just tank all the damage leaving everyone free to do whatever they wish next up is going to be Therian the merchant and this will be surpassing power SP saver boost start and fleet foot pretty basic stuff occasionally I may wish to fire off the uh, Ebers Reckoning Thief Div Divine skill. So that might come into play from time to time, but for the most part though, it is just the same story as Ulbrook. We're not really going to be doing that much damage because the other two characters more than make the distance for us. So again, it's mainly utility, which is why I expect him as a merchant. Then there's going to be Primrose and Cyrus, both having the exact same builds. Primrose is going to be a Star Seer, and Cyrus is going to be a Rune Lord. These guys do incredible amounts of damage with the setup we're going. This is the Nuking setup, and I've actually made some pretty decent work of the secret boss of this game just by using this particular one on the first phase. But yeah, you want to have as much damage as you can as soon as you can, so that's why we have Elemental Edge. Surpassing power to increase the damage cap. Elemental Aid, so that we can increase the damage that we do. And then BP Eater to take things to new heights. It's all very well and good, and honestly, these guys will completely make up for the fact that Prim uh, that uh, Ulbrich and Therian might not necessarily attack that much. 
So going over to the equipment that we have, like I said, we're not really going to put too much emphasis on this, but I would like to point out the Death Cleaver, which is the second strongest axe in the game. You can get this one at the Ebony Grotto, where you're doing Ophelia's quest in Whisper Mill. Then you have the Force Shield, which is a very, very good one. We're just trying to focus on tankiness, and like I said, Ulbrich has the highest physical defense stats out of all the characters. So the Crystal Armor, you could also swap this out for a Crystal Vest if you're afraid of the magic damage, but then he does have very high HP as it is, and we're going to be healing very consistently again thanks to Dodor's charity so honestly it's up to you if you want to but uh, I'd personally just prefer to have as much physical damage as I can because it really does help for random encounters then there's going to be the captain's badge of badge of friendship this is purely for utility sake what you could also do is just use the empowering necklace increase your HP by a little bit more and the blazon of protection just to give ourselves just a little boost in our ability so as you can see over there 6160 HP we could bring that further with saving grace Next up is going to be Therian. Again, we're not really doing too much in the way of attacking with him, but I would like to give him more speed and SP where possible, so that's what these accessories are for. Primrose and uh, Cyrus have very similar armor builds to each other, Adamant Adamantine Hat and Sorcerer's Robes and the Elemental Augmentor. And then, we, we're using the Forbidden Spear, because unfortunately, Primrose is unable to use elemental attacks. And the way that it works with magic damage in this game is that it always scales off of whatever weapon that you're using that has the highest magical damage. So in this case, that's going to be the Spear. At 303, uh, she can't use any staff, so this is the best thing we can do. We do get a speed penalty from this, but considering Primrose is the fastest character in the roster, then it doesn't really count for much, because she's still going to be faster than everyone that isn't Therian in this party. And then there's going to be Cyrus. I've given him the battle-tested staff, which you can get from, uh, this, I believe it was the town where Ophelia does her chapter 2. After you beat that quest, just go over to there and then purchase that from the cathedral and you're basically all set to go. This is a pretty easy one to do. Like I said, this is something that you can use early on for when you start unlocking alternate classes. And just really goes to show that, yeah, Ulbrich, he doesn't necessarily have to be a damage dealer all the time. You can just make him an apothecary, let him heal people and let them do their things. And if there's anything left over and he doesn't need to do any more healing, then he can go ahead and join the fray with his impressive physical attack stat. So what we're going to do is that we're going to head over to the demonstration and we're going to fight a couple of bosses. Okay, so here we are at the Gate of Finnis, and we're going to be fighting against Werner. Werner was the nemesis from Ulbricht's story, so it's only fitting that we use him as our little demonstration target. So, the first thing you want to do is just, we actually got a little bit lucky, usually Werner does go a couple of times before the battle even begins, but since that's not going to happen, instead we're going to in go for broke with just all of our dagger abilities, and then see if we can land the break right when we start. I think by landing the break instantly, we should have a pretty good time of it. Alright, so here's the thing, uh, when you're, whenever you're using, well, whenever you're playing Octopath in general, the first thing you want to always be aware of is what's going to happen the next turn. By seeing that Ulbrich is going to go first the next turn, what I can do is just use a pomegranate on myself, and then I will see that Cyrus is going to just go and use a light rune on himself, because this guy has a weakness to light. So now we see that the order is in place, and this is the perfect ordering actually, because now I can just have Ulbrich use his daughter's charity on Therian. And then Therian is going to go ahead and then use a Revitalizing Jam. Revitalizing Jams are the best items in the game, and they're actually quite farmable. It's a little bit time consuming as farming tends to be, but if you go to the Maw of the Ice Dragon, which is south of Northreach, you will be able to use the Steel ability of Therian's to steal a revitalizing jams. Lower down their HP just a little bit, but you will see some pretty nice returns. It's a very, very good skill to have. And here we go with Balgar's Blade. This is gonna hit six times, and you'll notice that it does substantially less damage than Hanit's War Master abilities with the Windhill's Battle Cry. The reason why is because the Fortitude ability does not actually scale with this one. It says damage, but it, what it really means is physical damage, so unfortunately, having lower HP won't boost the damage. So as you see over here, we do have a bit of low SP, because again, by virtue of having the Elemental Aid, but honestly, that's okay. We're playing as Ulbrich, he has the ability to help us save on our item usage by just simply using Daughter's Charity and then using it inside battle will mean you can just restore it instantly with only the price of one. It would be actually really funny to try giving the person that you target the Daughter's Charity on with the endless item skill, because I think what would happen there is people would just end up, you know, most of the people would end up just having, to, having those used for free. Okay, so this particular enemy, he is weak to fire and to light, I believe. So what we could do 
is um, we can just use our spear abilities. Let's use those best we can. And yeah, remember, we want to make sure we have the break as soon as possible. And the thing about Cyrus is that he only has access to... Let's see, he has access to the axe. And I believe the spear. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use a pomegranate on myself, just like before. Yeah, use the pomegranate just like before. And I'm actually going to have... Yeah, do you know what? I'm going to have a defend on this one. Okay, so he didn't have access to the spear. That's fine. I'm just going to use an axe. And I'm going to let him say his piece before things continue. So ideally, you would have to use this... Uh, what's it called? Ideally, you would use these abilities... Or uh, you do a break, rather, sorry. You would use a break when the enemy still has a couple of breaks left in the current turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Herb of Healing, because you don't want these things to hang around for too long. And I'm going to just go ahead and then break with the spear. Please don't miss. And then Ulbrich can now use his Apothecary skill, Dota's Charity, on Therian. So, the thing, so here's the issue here, is that we unfortunately will not be able to make use of other abilities... By looking at this turn order, we won't be able to make use of Primrose's ability. So instead, I'm actually going to use Cyrus to do this. So instead of using Theron, I'm just going to use Cyrus. Remember, you always have to keep track of the order of your turns. And then Cyrus is going to use his Jam, which is the perfect timing for it, because now this time, everyone has full SP, and then Primrose is going to use the Star Seer's Divine Skill to the fullest of its ability. So here we go. Yeah, nice solid 78,000 damage. And now we don't have to worry about this anymore, so now we can just go ahead and use Ebers Reckoning to finish things off. And then Cyrus is going to cap things off with a good old-fashioned Balagar's Blade. And that pretty much would seal the deal on this boss, so that's kind of the thing. Not just for using the Apothecary Daughter's skill, uh, or the, uh, the Divine skill, it's very, very important to take note of who's going to go next and who would benefit from what order they are in those turns. So, you know, that's one of the things that you have to keep track of, but that's what makes this so potent, is that the more you're aware of what your party members can and can't do, you will be able to optimize your turns. And the more you optimize your turns, the more damage you can do, and the more damage you can do, the more likely it is that the boss will die sooner. And the best thing about being an apothecary is that if ever there are any mistakes being made, you can easily fix those mistakes by virtue of being a healer and the ability to defend yourself with the warriors in sight ability. It's very useful for newer players and I would super recommend it for people that are struggling with bosses because this is something you can definitely make most use of. So anyways guys, thanks very very much for watching the character overview for Ulbrich the Apothecary. Very fun utility, very useful to have, and easily one of the most viable options you can have for when you're fighting against the secret boss and yeah, it's just really really good to use overall. So anyways, I will see you guys for the next build video where we're going to be looking at a very popular character character with a very popular tactic, so I hope to see you guys there. Take care, everyone.